Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. I just want my baby back. Dear listeners, today we bring the story of a woman who wanted her child back after she lost custody because of her abusive boyfriend. Was it for love or money? Let's find out. Please share your thought about this story and subscribe for more such tales. My name is Houston, and I'm a 39-year-old photographer working for a small news magazine. I've been married to Laura for around seven years, and we have a beautiful five-year-old boy. Laura and I met while she was working at a local automobile dealership as a front desk executive, and we dated for three years before tying the knot. She left her job once we got married. Initially, everything seemed fine, but the pandemic and the ensuing economic slowdown took a toll on our household. The tension at home became palpable, and I found myself taking on more work to make ends meet. Beyond my regular job, I started accepting small photography assignments at weddings and other events to supplement our income. Laura, understanding the financial strain, joined the dealership again. While it helped alleviate some of the financial burden, it also added to the overall stress in our lives. We were not able to give a lot of time to each other and even our son was being neglected a bit. My parents lend their help during these times and I used to leave my son at their place. They were more than happy to take care of their grandson. Life got tough for us, and I started getting worried about Laura. She began coming home really late from work, and it made me wonder what was going on. I tried to understand that her job was demanding, but the late nights became a regular thing. One day, my suspicion grew even more when I saw a guy dropping her off late at night. It made me feel uneasy and confused. I couldn't shake the feeling that there might be something she wasn't telling me. I asked Laura about the same and she dismissed as being someone from work who was just being helpful by dropping her at home. I left the topic but it still lingered in my mind. A few days later I was at a bachelor's party and the guys wanted to someone to click them having fun. I was a bit surprised but it was paying good, so, I agreed. At the party, one of the guys was in the toilet and was talking on his phone and it seems that he was talking to a woman and was talking some explicit talk with her and it seemed that they were discussing their intimate encounter. He then stated that tonight he will pick her up again and they will do it in his car. The guy washed his hands and looked at me and smiled. I smiled back and went out to click more pictures. The party was a bit wild, they had strippers and some other women also came in as the party ended and everyone was almost wasted by the booze and some unknown grass. I started to pack up my stuff and headed to my car in the parking. I saw a car stop by and I thought I saw Laura. I was not sure but I wanted to check if that was her. It was a bit dark and saw that same guy I met in the toilet. He was near his car and that woman was near him. I saw them kiss and get in his car. I walked towards the car and as I got near the car sped off. I was able to note the number and the make of the car. It was an old Dodge Charger General Lee same as the one from the Dukes of Hazard. I went back home and found that Laura was not home. I went to my parents and picked my son. When I was a few blocks away, I saw the same car and it was headed in the same direction as my home. Something deep inside me told me to turn off the light and follow the car. I followed and the car stopped at my house. They waited for a few seconds and Laura got off and adjusted her skirt. I knew she was cheating on me. I parked my car and went inside and Laura hugged me and took my son from me. I was seething in anger and I was barely able to control my anger. I took a day off the next day and followed Laura around. She went to her office and later the guy picked her up and they went to his apartment. Came out after two hours and he dropped her home. Everything was being filmed and I was documenting everything. Next day I went to the lawyer and asked to start the divorce proceedings. I went home and confronted Laura. I laid all the pictures on the table and told her that I am going to divorce her and I am not going to take any excuses from her. She sat there quietly and did not speak a word. She got up and packed her bag and took my son with her. The divorce proceedings went on at their own slow pace. Laura had moved in with her AP and was things were fine at first. A few days later I called Laura and asked to see my son. 
I took my son and went to my parents' house. While changing his clothes, I saw his bum had marks of trauma. My son cried when I touched him. My heart sank and I was furious. I went back to Laura and asked her what happened to my son. She did not agree to it and blamed me for the marks. I had to find out what was going on. I decided to snoop on them and since they were in an apartment, I decided to speak with the neighbors first. They told me that the two of them fight a lot and at times they have heard the baby scream as well. I asked them to call me when it happens the next time. That very same evening I got a call and I immediately called the CPS and asked them to reach Laura's new address. I reached there and soon CPS reached as well. There were loud screams going on when we knocked at the door. Once the door opened, I rushed in and searched for my son. He was in a corner and was crying like hell. As I reached near him, his first reaction was to cower down as to protect himself. Everyone saw that. I picked him up and hugged him close to my chest. The CPS team took him and checked him, he had fever and even had a slap imprint on his face. I lost my cool and charged at the AP and was about to land my punch when one of the CPS guys held me and stated, he is not worth risking your son's custody. I held back and walked out with my son. In the court this incident was brought up and I was given the complete custody of my son. A few months later my divorce was finalized. I was supposed to pay a small amount every month and since I had the custody Laura was supposed to pay me. Hence, I decided that we will adjust it. So, I never had to pay her anything substantial. This went on for some years and I was happy with my son. One day I got a notice and Laura now wanted the custody of my son. The matter went to the court since, I wanted to get this in the court. What happened in the court was similar to what happened in this particular interaction. Take this as just a reference. Ms. Laura? Yes, ma'am. You brought this case before the court. What's going on? I'm trying to get my baby back. Okay. My, uh, I had, so I have two babies. Okay. And, um, I had, a, I just had another baby with my boy. He's not my boyfriend anymore, but he hit my first baby. So Houston got to take him and I want him back because I don't, I'm not with that boyfriend anymore. So Houston took the baby or you lost the baby? Either way, Houston has the baby and I want it back. No, it's not either way. It's you, you lost the baby. So did somebody intervene and take the baby away from you? And yes, the ma'am. They took the baby nope. and gave him to Houston. Okay. And I want him back. Okay. And you have a new baby with your ex-boyfriend? Not ex-boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. So you, you guys are no longer together? Correct, ma'am. How does this new baby? How old's the new baby? Yes. Like eight months. And you're done with him after eight months? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was done with him like 10 months ago. The baby's eight months. Oh, okay. So before the baby was born? Yes, ma'am. Did he come to the birth of the child? No. I didn't want him around. Oh, okay. All right. So you now want to get custody back from him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. From Houston. Who does the baby live with? Me. The baby? No, my baby lives with me. No, not your child. The, how many children do you all have between you? Just one. Just one. And the child lives with him? Yes, ma'am. And you want the baby back? Yes, ma'am. How long has the baby lived with you? The baby? He's been yeah. living the whole time. Oh, okay. And how old is this child? Five. Five. Oh. And you expect to get child support? Yes, ma'am. And the child has been living with him for almost, is it a boy or a girl? Boy. His whole life? Yes, ma'am. Well, when I get my baby back, I want child support, yeah. He makes way more money than I do. I want my baby back and I want child support. I'm sorry, you have to excuse me because nothing you're saying is making sense right now. You came to court to ask me to give a child back to you that was taken from you, that's five years old, that's pretty much lived with this man the entire time that he has been they took, taken care of. They took my baby away because my ex-boyfriend is an abuser and I'm not with him anymore, so I want my baby back. Right, but the child hasn't been living with you. 
the child has been living with him. Yeah, because of my ex, and I'm not with my ex anymore. Uh, yeah, so no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. He would literally have to have given you the child back, and then you come in here, and you, after you've been having the child for some time, then you come in here and say, Judge, I want this to be changed. I've been having the child this entire time. I want him to pay child support. That would be a little bit more reasonable. But what you're asking for today is very unreasonable. Okay, well give me my baby back and then I'll come back in a while and ask for child support. Well, I can't give you your baby back because I never took your baby, okay? Actually, nobody really took your baby. You lost your baby for, for your own negligence with your ex-boyfriend. That has nothing to do with me, okay? Now, fill me in over here. The baby was placed with you after the boyfriend hit the baby? Yep. And he's been living with you ever since then? Yep. You've been taking care of him? Mm-hmm. You pay for everything for the child? Everything. What does she do? Uh, I visit. She, she visits unsupervised. Okay, congratulations. Well, financially, what does she do? Uh, oh, financially? Yeah. Hmm. Nothing. Oh, that's what I figured. Okay, I see what's going on here. Yeah, and I'm not about to play this game with you. You're the one that's going to pay him child support today. What? Yeah, you are. He makes like three times as much money as I do. I have to give him my money? Um, it's for the child, so yes, you do. You do. But the good thing is, it's based on your income. You'll get credit for the other child that you just, you're eight month old, you'll get credit for that child. Okay. But yes, you are going to pay him child support. That's just the right thing to do. It's one child between the two of you, okay, and health insurance. I'm assuming you pay it. Yes. How much is it? 66 a month. $66. I okay. get it through my employer, so. Huh? I get it through my employer. Okay, gotcha. And how much do you make a year? $38,000. $38,000. So I have your gross coming out to $3,200. That brings your net to $2,648.01, giving you credit for the other child that you have. Your child support obligation comes out to $423.69, plus the $66 you're going to reimburse him for health insurance every month. So $66 added to $463.69 is $489.69. $489.69? Did you need me to repeat it? I'm asking you, four eighty nine. I have to give him almost five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, that's how it works. Did you really think that I was going to have him pay you child support? No, I just wanted my baby. Oh, okay. So your first answer was no. So then you understand exactly why you have to pay child support. Is there anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. Is there anything else? Nope. Okay. You all, maybe you all are dismissed. I was happy, and now Laura has to pay me. As the saying goes, you have to pay to play. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.